Okay. Um, so let's look at the, the Hadoop mapper. What happens in the Hadoop mapper? So um, for using the Cassandra uh, base uh, in, uh, column input format, uh, the mapper is going to basically get a byte buffer. So byte buffer is basically a Java class. Where it, it's basically uh, the, the buffer for collecting bytes. Uh, and then so the input value is basically a sorted map of byte buffer and i column. i column is something uh, as is an interface that represents your column. So i column is, is an interface defined in the, the Cassandra API. Um, that's uh, basically an, an interface that uh, represents a column. So uh, the, the byte buffer is basically the name of the column that you want to, to query and i column is the the um, the interface uh, that you want to interact with. Uh, so using the Cassandra byte buffer util, uh, there's a there's a byte buffer util class that Cassandra provides. You can effectively read and write uh, byte buffers uh, in Cassandra. Cassandra basically uses the Java NIO uh, library. So a, a lot of use of byte buffers is is done by Cassandra. So if you are not that familiar with, with the NIO API, uh, there's a, a utility that Cassandra provides uh, that's called as the byte buffer util. You can easily use this to read and write uh, information uh, uh, or convert byte into, into strings and string it back into bytes um, um, while using Cassandra. So, um, and also importantly, the map output should be writable. So if you looked at the, the, the Hadoop API, your um, output key should be uh, of the type writable, um, um, so it should try, uh, it should follow the writable interface. So uh, Cassandra can also uh, has writables uh, as part of the, the map output. You could uh, use those uh, classes as well. So that is something that you need to take care of while you're uh, um, interacting with the Hadoop mapper that is reading data from Cassandra. How that would uh, look like, we'll, we'll look at in the next slide. So this is typically how your uh, Hadoop mapper code would look like. Uh, basically, your, uh, you, can, you have to define your own class, um, which will extend the, the mapper uh, class from, from the Hadoop API, and it will take uh, the key value uh, as inputs and the output key values information. So if you look at, uh, this is basically the, the byte uh, array as, as a key. The value is basically the sort map, the byte array, and the i column information. Uh, the output, uh, probably you want to save it as, as text. Uh, and um, um, the, the output key is going to be text. Output value is going to be uh, intradible. So if this is your uh, typical uh, class for the mapper implementation, if you want to read data from Cassandra, then for having column names, column name information can be also supplied via config. So uh, this can be done by setting up the con uh, context. So when you're setting the job config information, you can uh, set this information uh, as part of the configuration. And if you want to get it as part of the mapper, here how you, here's how you do it. So basically, in, an, in a setup method which gets invoked at the start of the mapper, you could just query the context, get configuration, get column name. So if column name is the property that I'm setting at job config time, um, this is how I'm going to get the value of this. And if I get this value, I'm basically going to save the column name value here. Uh, then I initiate the, the intradable and the, the text uh, classes for uh, my, my Hadoop's uh, output and basically write my map method. So uh, I'm, I'm overriding the map method uh, for, for the mapper here. Um, so it's, it's going to take the byte array, that the key, this is going to be the value, and then context information is basically passed to me. Uh, then you uh, basically also have the uh, IO exception and interrupted exception um, classes um, um, uh, coded here. So this is uh, an important thing that this is all written in Java. So people who are uh, familiar with Java will find it easy. People who are not familiar with Java probably will find it difficult uh, to understand this code. So um, I'm, I'm going in pretty detail, so this should be helpful. So what you do is basically all this column information is going to be provided by your input format. All this data is pretty handy. What you do is just invoke uh, columns.get. So um, if you um, so since it's a sorted map, 
you just uh, get it and then um, the, the name column name that bytes uh, should give you all the i column information so all, what it gives you is uh, the the i column class a, uh, and then uh, based uh, the i column um, uh, or uh, the i column base further gives you the the values out of uh, whatever information is being read from the Cassandra API. So uh, what you can do is basically say i column column and then columns.get would give you all the i column information and then the actual values can be uh, further derived from column that value. So all this i column has a, a value method which will give you the, the value information for that particular column. So uh, you already know the column name here. Uh, you have basically passed it here. So you already have the column name. The column value can be derived in this fashion. And then uh, you uh, say your column value is uh, delimited in sort of base, maybe space delimited or something. You want to basically tokenize for basically you, this example is for a word count example. So uh, supposing that this, this uh, value that you're getting is tokenized in some fashion, you can further use a string tokenizer to tokenize it. Uh, so in this case, it's default uh, to a space delimination. And you can uh, also, if it's delimited in some other way, you can provide your delimiter as, as a second argument to the string tokenizer class. And that would uh, tokenize your uh, values uh, effectively. Then what you do is basically iterate through all your values and then uh, set up the, the the context. You just set up uh, what the word was, basically the text uh, that you have uh, defined here, the, the text class, and then uh, the, the value for this. Now, uh, uh, important thing that you do is since all your values are, are going to be one, there's an effective optimization that you've done here that you just set the private final static and just, just say the value is one. So you can just reuse this object without the overhead of creating new objects. This is how we create uh, the, the words and assign the, the frequency to this. And that's uh, how your mapper would look like if you want to read data from Cassandra.